Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into the programmable input-output features of the RP2040. Last time, we explored frequency and delay options that can be used to control the PIO program timing. However, the ability to make logical branches adds flexibility and power to any programming language. In PIO, this is accomplished by the jump instruction. So why don't you join me as we learn more about the capabilities of the RP2040 PIO jump instruction. This is the fifth video in my series about the RP2040 programmable input-output. We've most recently addressed PIO timing options that can be used to control time-sensitive applications like serial communications or video and audio signals. I briefly discussed the PIO jump instruction a couple times before, but only to create an endless loop. We'll see in this video that jump is much more powerful. I like to call it the Swiss Army knife of the RP2040 PIO instruction set. Not only can we use jump to transfer program execution to another place in the PIO program, we can also use it to do a conditional branch based on the contents of the X register, do a conditional branch based on the contents of the Y register, decrement the X register, decrement the Y register, compare the X and Y registers, do a conditional branch based on the status of a GPIO pin, do a conditional branch based on the status of the output shift register, control the status of up to five side set pins, and delay the program by up to 32 clock cycles. I'll use seven MicroPython examples to demonstrate all the variations of the jump instruction. The operations are similar if you're using C, C++, but the syntax is different. You can find out more information on the C, C++ syntax in the Raspberry Pi Pico C, C++ SDK. First, let's review the unconditional jump. We've used this before in our first adventures into PIO land. In MicroPython, we define the point where we want to jump to using label followed by a parentheses with the label name in quotations. Then we invoke the jump using JMP followed by parentheses and the label name in quotations. Note that the label placeholder does not take any program space or execution time, although the jump instruction does both. Here's a simple Blink LED program. Let's go through this example in detail. First, we import the PIO-related routines as well as the pin routine and time. Then we set up our PIO program. Here, we initialize the output to low. In our PIO LED blink routine, we start with the label and then set the first pin to zero. We'll also add a delay of 31 cycles to that instruction. Then we have seven no-ops which each take 32 cycles to execute one for the instruction itself, and then 31 more as a delay. That's a total of 256 cycles with a pin off. Then we set the first pin to 1, again taking 32 cycles. Six no-ops, each taking 32 cycles, are executed before the unconditional jump, which also takes 32 cycles. This results in 256 cycles with a pin on. The jump sets the program counter back to the main loop label where the program starts all over again. The total period of the blink routine is 512 clock cycles. We instantiate the program with a frequency of 2000 Hz, meaning that the LED should blink at the rate of about 4 Hz, that is 2000 divided by 512. This program is straightforward, but the timing is set by the delays in the program and is limited to the length of the program. Remember, each state machine only has enough program memory for 32 instructions. Now let's try using conditional jumps to blink our LED. In this case, I'll use the X scratch register to hold a flag for the conditional jump. Inside the PIO routine, there are two distinct parts. The first is the main program that turns the LED on and off as well as setting the value for the conditional jump. The second part works almost like a subroutine, where it performs a delay as well as determining the re-entry point into the main program based on the status of the conditional jump flag. 
In the PIO main program, we turn the LED off and set the X scratch register to zero. Then we jump to the delay routine. After killing 224 cycles, we'll perform a conditional jump. Because X is zero, we'll jump to label return zero. At this point, we'll turn the LED on and set the X scratch register to one. Then we jump to the delay routine again. After 224 cycles, we encounter the conditional jump. However, since X is not zero, the Pico skips over the instruction, however still using one clock cycle, and then executes an, the unconditional jump to label return one. This program can be condensed. I made it a little verbose so that I could clearly illustrate how conditional jumping can be used to select a return point. This is a little more efficient than our first example, but the delay is still determined by the program and is limited to the size of our program memory. Let's try using the decrement and jump instruction for our delay. In this example, we replace the no-ops in the delay routine with a delay loop. Here we set the X scratch register to 31 and then execute the decrement jump. Each time the instruction is executed, the Y register is sampled. If it is zero, the jump instruction is bypassed. If it isn't zero, the Y register is decremented by one and the jump is taken. In this case, up to sub delay loop. This code will execute 31 times before it exits the loop. Then it uses the value of the X scratch register to determine where to rejoin the main program. This is much more compact than the previous example. However, the delay is still hard coded into the program. Let's see if we can make the program more flexible by allowing the operator to input the delay on the fly. In this example, we use a pull instruction with the non-blocking option to get the delay value from the Pico main program. The non-blocking option will not stall the PIO program if the transmit FIFO is empty. Remember, when a pull instruction is executed, it empties the transmit FIFO. However, the Pico has a neat little workaround that allows you to maintain your input data. If the transmit FIFO is empty during a non-blocking pull, it's the same as performing a move from the X register to the output shift register. Therefore, if you want to continuously load the last data from the transmit FIFO into the output shift register, perform a move instruction from the output shift register to the X scratch register immediately after doing the pull instruction. After we load the X register with the delay value, we'll also move it into the Y scratch register. I'll turn off the LED with the set instruction and then execute the Y jump and decrement instruction. After Y value has been decremented to zero, the program will bypass the jump. Then we reload the Y register with the delay value from the X register, turn on the LED, and enter another Y decrement and jump loop. When this delay loop is complete, we jump to the beginning, check for a new delay value, and do it all again. The main MicroPython program in Pico grabs an input value from the monitor, converts it to an integer, and then puts the delay value into the state machine transmit FIFO. As you can see, each time I input a new delay value, the blink rate changes. Although I'm currently using a very slow frequency so we can see the results on camera, this will work for any frequency all the way up to 125 megahertz. That's how the Pico can generate video signals. The next conditional jump I'll demonstrate is if the X and Y registers aren't equal. In this example, I'll turn the blink program on and off based on the value of the input. At the beginning of the blink loop, we input a numeric value into the X scratch register. Then at the start of each delay loop, we load 31 into the Y scratch register. We check if X and Y are equal with the jump X not Y instruction. If X and Y are equal, in this case 31, 
Then the jump instruction is skipped over and the blink program continues. However, if they're not equal, the program will branch back to the main loop and the blink program will be bypassed. We can also do a conditional jump based on the value of one of the GPIO pins. Here I have a program similar to example 5. However, I replaced the X not Y jump with the pin jump. In this example, I initialize blink off pin as GPIO pin 16 and pull it down. Then during instantiation, I assign the jump pin as blink off pin. During PIO execution, if the jump pin is high, the branch will be taken, in this case to label main loop by passing the blink program. If the pin is low, the branch will not be taken, allowing the blink program to continue. The final conditional jump is if the output shift register is not empty. In this example, I initialize the PIO program with auto pull turned on. During the main program, I input a value from the keyboard and put it into the transmit FIFO. Then in the PIO program, I check to see if the output shift register is not empty with the output shift register not empty jump. If it's not empty, I clear the output shift register using the out instruction and then allow the blink program to go through one cycle. However, if the output shift register is empty, the program skips the output shift register not empty jump and then takes an unconditional jump back to the beginning and keeps checking. This is very useful for implementing serial communications protocols. Thanks for joining me today. We've learned about all the variations of the RP2040 PIO jump instruction. Like the other PIO instructions, the various options of the jump instruction make it much more powerful than it initially appears. Next time, I'd like to explore how the Pico can control video signals using PIO, so stay tuned. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and Click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!